Welcome to Angling Buzz brought to you by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. Well, spring is in the air here in the North Country, and that means springtime panfish. We're talking about crappies. We're talking about bluegills. These are two fan favorites for anglers of all ages. I know a lot of people are eager to get out and enjoy the open water season. And today we're joined by Joe Nelson, who's going to share with us some of his springtime panfish strategies. Now, Joe, first off, can we talk about location and where to find panfish this time of the year? It's all about location this time of year, and I'm specifically looking for shallow bays, channels, flats that warm up quickly. If you look on any good map, these are easy places to find, and these are just simply the first areas to warm up, and all panfish are literally just like sucked right into these spots shortly after ice leaves the lakes. And you know, that being said, warm, stable weather really is a big deal at this time of year, and warming trends tend to bring fish in, cold fronts push them out. So there's this back and forth movement going on, and it's interesting with water temperatures, they can vary a lot during this time of year. So it's important to really monitor your electronics, look at that surface temperature value, and also take into account wind direction. It can really pile up, push warm water into these shallow areas. And one thing you can be sure of this time of year, you know, crappies especially, but bluegills, they'll find that warm water, they just will. Now, Joel, once you get into these areas, what should we be looking for when it comes to types of cover? You know, it really depends on the lake. Um, developing lily pads, bulrush stems, good cabbage weeds, these are all great options. Any submerged wood can be a real draw, especially for crappies. And in some cases, there's really not much going up, maybe dead weeds on the bottom of the lake. So that's what you're gonna, that's what you're gonna be looking for. Okay, so now we know where to find them. What are some of your favorite presentations for panfish? I've got a couple different rigs to fish based on the mood of the fish and depth of water they're in. You know, a simple slip float rig is just a mainstay delivery system for anything early season panfish. Now, most of the time, early season pan fishing is just done in shallow water, and this is where that kind of fishing with floats shines. And the, this Northland Light Bite, it's a great sensitive float. It's gonna enable you to detect both down hits and up bites. And as far as jigs, the, the Northland Firefly jig or the Gypsy jig, the, these are famous jigs for crappies and bluegills both. And most of the time, I don't have to use live bait. If the fish are negative and moody, I can do that. But I've also got like these Northland Impulse Soft Plastics. And you know, they, those come in a wide variety of bug, minnow, and creature shapes, really have a lot of action to them. Joel, uh, are there other important things that we should consider maybe, you know, rod, reel, and line? It wasn't that long ago, you know, panfish rods were these super whippy, short five footers. And today, longer six and seven foot rods like the St. Croix Legend Elite Panfish, they're incredible. They're fine tuned machines that have power and actions that are not only going to be working for your float fishing applications, but they're going to allow you to cast light panfish baits really far. And I tell you, it's just a, a finely tuned machine. And as far as line goes, I really like anything four to six pound test. If it's really clear water, you can focus on fluorocarbon applications, but quite often this time of year, it's all about just putting baits where they need to be. And as long as you're fishing with stuff that's reasonably in that four to six pound variety, and it's heavy enough for the cover you're fishing, you don't have to worry about it. Well, thank you, Joel, for sharing some of your insights into early season panfish. And right now, well, you know, it's prime time for crappie and bluegill. And we're going to be back after this short commercial break with more insights into this topic and more, including our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues.
2021, Minnesota watercraft inspectors found that 95% of boaters were doing their best to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. In short, drain plugs were removed, no standing water was inside the boat, and no zebra mussels or plants were found on the boat or trailer. Thanks for following these simple habit forming rules. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from motors and live wells. Remove all boat plugs and dispose of unused bait in the trash. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Well, now you can with Fleet Rewards. It's free to sign up and there's no credit card required. Using Fleet Rewards is easy. Earn points every time you shop. Plus, get exclusive member offers, birthday and anniversary perks, free tire rotations, and more. Download the Fleet Farm app or create an account at fleetfarm.com rewards to start earning points today. Fleet Farm, proudly serving the Midwest since 1955. Simple, fast, and easy. This automatic launching and loading system on BoatToTrailer.com makes unloading and loading your boat a breeze on both roller or bunk trailer configurations. This system is a simple one bolt install. No more hanging over the boat, no more cranking in the boat, and no more wet feet. Speed your boat ramp time by visiting BoatToTrailer.com. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Up next is our Timely Topics feature. We're going to be joined by Jeremy Smith, who's catching big slab crappie with jerk baits. So what I'm looking for with side imaging is if it was a warm, sunny day, I think we would be able to actually see these fish because it's a soft, muddy bottom. But I'm not getting a lot of really good returns of fish right now. I mean, I think I might see a couple there, but they're really tight to the bottom right now. But what I'm really looking for is the densest clumps of cover. So the side imaging allows me to look at big areas on these flats as opposed to just looking with my 2D sonar or my down imaging to see when I'm right on top of it in that shallow water. So what I'll do is we'll, we'll comb around, we'll pick a depth, say six feet, and I know I can cover with side imaging out to six to eight, and then we'll maybe take that eight foot line, which will make me look out into 12 and we'll just scan those two depth lines until we see wherever the best looking weed growth is. All right, so now what you can see here on the side imaging as we're rolling through this, you see these dark spots here? These little, these are, these are shadows and this is the edge of where there's some of that curly leaf pond weed coming up. So it might not seem that distinct. The cover's really soft, so it's not giving me a great return. But that's the kind of stuff, when I see those dark spots, I'm going, okay, I know that there's some cover there. And these little tiny white specks are what those plants are. They're actually the plants and even some of these bigger specks, in fact, I'm thinking this is that little patch of pondweed right there that's casting that shadow. But some of the bigger ones might even be a few of the crappies that are up. If I was doing this on a warm, sunny day when the fish were up, these things would show up like you couldn't believe. They'd really be easy to see on this. but. You don't always get to see fish on this technology. When you get cold fronts, a lot of times the fish go to the bottom, and when fish are on the bottom, they're very difficult to see with any sonar technology. So when you can't see them, you look for the best cover available. Oh geez, another just tank. But the system for doing this is um, somewhat, um, somewhat specialized, but you, I'm sure you have this, this equipment that will work for this, and I can run through my lineup of the different rods, reels, and line that I'm using to, uh, to catch these guys. That's a nice one, that'd be a great little eater. But the big ticket with this is the line. Braid is key, I'm gonna get this guy back. All right, so that fish I just caught on the size four, ooh, Matt's got another one, size four X-Wrap. Now for the size four, I'm fishing with the St. Croix Legendary panfish, like the nicest panfish rod on planet Earth. This thing is amazing, but it has, it's a light power and extra fast action. That means the rod is bending really close to the tip, and that is what makes the bait dance. If you've got a slower action, the bait is being pulled more and you can't make the bait jump. The whole idea with this presentation is to make the bait dance, but not cover a lot of distance horizontally. Here I've got the Procyon, LT, which is just another great ultra smooth reel. It's got the digi gear system in it. It's got the drag that is just, I mean, listen to that. 
you're never gonna break off a big pike or anything like that. It's just an amazing, amazing reel, super smooth. So I use the 1000 size on the small baits. The line I'm using on the seven foot light setup for throwing the size four is the Suffix Nano Braid and six pound test. The other big part of this system is of course the leader. So I tie an Albright knot, kind of a modified Albright knot to the leader. This is Suffix Invisalign and I'm fishing an eight pound leader on this. When I first started doing it, I was fishing a six, but I find that the rigidness in the weight of the eight actually makes the bait perform a little better. And you're not getting bit off by pike as much. You can deal with bigger fish. And if you're around cover, you just don't, you don't lose bait. So the eight pound leader is a big deal, I think, for making this bait work. Got one? That a boy. Got him. Nice one? It's a nice fish. Nice crappie, oh yeah. Isn't it just amazing how aggressive they are? Like you wouldn't think that, tell me 10 years ago that you'd believe somebody that said this is a great bait for crappie fishing. Absolutely not. Would not have believed it. And I, I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear. The X-Rap is one of the most incredible baits that you can throw in the spring. And I would bet anything that if people are out here with minnows, or whatever else, they would not be catching nearly as many fish as we would in these conditions as we are with the next wrap. It's truly a remarkable, amazing, amazing lure. Well, jerk baits, no question, catch fish of all sizes. And when you downsize and use the techniques that Jeremy Smith showed us there, you can really catch some real slabs. Well, stay with us after this short commercial break. We have our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Marine Pro from the makers of Seafoam Motor Treatment. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment for all types of marine engines. Just pour it in. Marine Pro works to clean and lubricate your entire fuel system, helps engines start easier, run smoother, stabilizes fuel, and helps prevent costly boat engine problems. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Seafoam Marine Pro, available at Fleet Farm. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. It's time for this week's Buzz Bite Report. To kick it off, we're gonna join Jason Mitchell, who has some tips for targeting early season walleyes. Hey, Jason Mitchell with Angling Buzz. You know, early in the year, you know, shortly after the opener, especially in Minnesota and, and Wisconsin too, you know, I look at water temperature a lot. I think that's such an important component as far as picking where you're gonna fish. A lot of times it might mean picking some smaller lakes that are warming up quicker. Smaller, shallower lakes can fish really well early in the year. Even if I'm on a big lake, some of these big lakes can fish well, but a lot of times I'm looking for warmer water as well. So don't be afraid to spend a lot of time just looking at your temperature gauge. And so I like to look for that warmer water. A lot of times that wind will push that warmer water on a particular part of the lake. Use your temperature gauge early in the year. And a lot of times you can't go wrong pitching a jig, pitching a jig in plastic, pitching a jig in minnow, pitching a jig in a shiner. And a lot of times we're gonna find these fish shallow on a lot of these fisheries. Thanks, Jason. Now let's head over to the Red River with Brad Durek, where river levels are up compared to last year. Catfishing on the Red River has been put in pause with a big blizzard last week and major rains over the weekend. The river's coming up fast and is probably going to be flirting with major flood stage. Uh, for now, water temps are at 40. The river is in the, almost into major flood stage. It looks like nothing is going to be happening here on the Red River in the catfish run for two to three weeks. With that said, after last year's extreme low water, this is just what the doctor ordered to get the fish back in high gear, get good migrations from Canada. And once this settles out and things warm up, probably in the later part of May, I expect that catfishing on the whole Red River system is going to be phenomenal. But for now, Mother Nature has other ideas for us. 
So stay tuned from the Red River of the North. Thanks, Brad. Now let's head to Leech Lake with Toby Kabalivog of Leisure Outdoors. Can't wait for the walleye season to start, but before that, I can't help but to think about the crappie fishing and the perch fishing. This winter we had great perch fishing on Leech Lake. Those backwater bays are gonna warm up first. They're muddy water. The pencil reeds, the brown pencil reeds are maybe standing still, but a lot of times they get knocked over with the ice. Perfect bedding habitat for uh, the spawning fish and, and also a feeding fish. So how do you target those? Of course, light, light jigs. Here we have a hair jig that I can fan cast and search those uh, existing weed beds and or outside the weeds. Then I have a stand-up jig for sand grass, and that's where I'm gonna be targeting perch this time of year. Of course, once you find them, it's hard to beat. The old standard bobber, put the, uh, put the anchor out or, or spot lock and, and have, have at it. Remember, conservation's very important. Those fish are pretty susceptible to uh, over-harvest this time of year when they're up there in those areas. So take a few, eat a few, enjoy fishing. Now let's head north to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. My nature is not being too kind us this spring, but we're getting there. It's trying to snow again today, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks here, the ice will be off on the lakes up north. Meanwhile, it's a good time to go through your equipment, uh, go through your trailer and your boat, make sure your batteries are in good shape, all your lights are working and all that stuff, because it's a real bummer being that guy at the boat landing open the day and having you know, boat and trailer issues. Not a good thing. Also, check out your rods and reels. I like putting a drop of good reel oil on all my moving parts on my reel. And then I like to re-spool. I like suffix lines. All your retailers are having some really good sales right now, so check everything out and get ready for opening day. It's coming fast and uh, have a good week and we'll talk to you next time. Now let's head east to the Wolf River with Mr. Bluegill, Troy Peterson. Hey everyone, Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill, and this week's Buzz Bite report is coming to you from just south of New London on the Wolf River. And a lot of the males have really came down out of the river, out of the marshes, and are working their way back. Uh, the walleye fishing has been absolutely incredible. Um, early morning hours, you know, fishing some uh, shallow sand flats been good, but dragon crawlers down the centers of the rivers uh, has been working all day long. And uh, there are still some guys getting some fish in the deeper holes uh, with minnows and wolf river rigs and such. Um, I'm really excited to see all these white bass that came up here over the last few days. Water temperatures have moved up into the low to mid 50s and uh, really brought a lot of the white bass up into a really nice size. Uh, we've been finding a lot of the males in the trees up in the shallow bends uh, casting small spinners or even fly rigs. Um, seems a little bit early, but uh, they are starting to show up and it's only going to get better as this water temperature warms up. So get out, enjoy. I'm Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill. We'll catch you guys on the water. Developed from the latest technology, Blackfish Technical Apparel outperforms, so anglers have gear that they can trust in, no matter the conditions. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. The deep feed bucktail jig from Northland Tackle. It's dressed for success. This proven successful keel design gets you down faster, straighter, and the bucktail with its natural flowing presentation delivers unmatched performance. Add to that a unique range of colors, sizes, and realistic 3D eyes. You get a bait that exudes match the hatch realism. The Deep V Bucktail Jig from Northland Tackle. We are walleye. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water but not anymore. Smooth moves changed the game. 
It's a must-have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day in the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with Smooth Moves. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Right now it's time for our cool products and we're talking about panfish. We're gonna start with the mini rig smelt, the impulse mini rig smelt from Northland Tackle. Now this is a nice small jig head, narrow sided jig that darts. This can be fished underneath a bobber. And we're gonna move down the line here. We have a variety of a few different jigs here. This is from Big Bite Baits. This is the Lindner Panfish Special. These are nice, you just have to tie them on. They're already rigged up. They got a soft plastic body. They have a nice um, uh, feather tail here that uh, has a lot of action. These can be fished horizontal, nice bright panfish colors. And from VMC, this is the new bucktail jig in smaller sizes, the original bucktail jig. I've used it a lot for bass and walleye. They have a smaller size here, 1 16th ounce and 1 32nd ounce that are perfect for panfish, bluegill and crappie, nice bright colors, great VMC hook on here. And this is a tried and tested jig line that you should definitely try out. This can be fished under a bobber or cast. Now when you think about panfish, not always hard baits come to mind, but hard baits like the Rapala Slab Wrap can be absolutely effective at triggering the biggest crappie in the school to bite. And these are nice bright colors. These can be cast out. They can be jigged um, uh, vertical as well. And also from Rapala to complement that, the Ultra Light Rip and Wrap. Rip and Wraps are very popular for bass and walleye fishermen. And the sizes like this in the Ultra Light uh, series are perfect for panfish. These can be cast out, you know, these things cast a mile. They can also be vertical jigged. These are great for panfish and again for triggering bigger panfish to bite. And a couple options for soft plastics for your trailers from Big Bite Baits, the Kamikaze Swim On and the regular grub. Grubs, these things always work. They always work well, especially in nice bright colors like this. And also, maybe you're fishing pressured fish, you wanna try something a little bit different. The Kamikaze Swim On has a unique kind of split tail here. A lot of action, great colors from Big Bite Baits. And the weather can always be kind of interesting here in the upper Midwest. Blackfish has you covered with their torrent rain suit, top and bibs here. 100% waterproof, this is breathable, very comfortable and the weather here, it can be warm, so you wanna be comfortable and not be hot when you're wearing your rain gear. So this is breathable technology that they have in here. Waterproof, they have a non-slip uh, bib overalls here. Very, very comfortable from Blackfish, the Torrent Series Rain Suit. Up next from Seafoam, Seafoam Marine Pro. This is specifically designed for either your outboard or inboard engine, two stroke, four stroke. This clean stabilizes your fuel for up to two years. Just add a can of this. Every time you fill up your tank, you're gonna maximize your performance for your engine. And next up having a good pair of sunglasses is important. This is the Spawn series from Wavy Label. These are available both in a, a polycarbonate lens, also a glass lens. It's great for seeing into the shallows and identifying the different you know, types of weeds that crappie and bluegill can be located in this time of year. Also protect your, your eyes as well. Just a fantastic uh, sunglass series from Wavy Label, the Spawn. And having a good rod that's designed for panfish is important. And well, St. Croix has it right here with their panfish series. This is balanced for panfish. It's a very, very sensitive rod. It's also a great value in the series. So when you're fishing these smaller jigs, these smaller hard baits, this is a perfect line, the panfish series from St. Croix Rods. And lastly from Clam, the Clam Fortis Panfish Net. This has a rubber coated polyester, nice deep hoop, perfect for scooping up those big slab crappie or big bluegills. It has a nice extended handle with an engraved ruler on here, a very comfortable net to use, glide lock technology, as well as a quick release handle, just a great, a great net. Uh, they also have this available also for bass and for walleye as well, but this is specifically designed for panfish from Clam Outdoors. And be sure to shop online at fleetfarm.com and also your local Fleet Farm store. And up next, it's time for our Technique of the Week. We're joining Brian Brosdahl out in the field for some panfish tactics. Hi, Brian Brosdahl. I gotta tell you, my favorite time to catch fish is in the spring. 
big slab crappies are really one of my favorite fish to go after. Not all the time are they easy to catch or find, but as a search bait, I'll use Crappie King Thumperheads by Northland Tackle with a little curly tail on the back or just a minnow. But I find myself most of the time using a feather jig. This is a Northland Fishing Tackle Firefly jig. Pink and white is universally a popular color for crappies. I have really good success no matter the water clarity or color. The Gypsy Jig is a jig that's got flashable, it's synthetic, but it's really bright and reflects sunlight really nice. In dark stained water, you can't beat that. Another thing I never put away are my ice fishing uh, lures. The gill getters and mud bugs are great for crappies from spring all the way through summer. They get a nice, good sized hook, really sharp. Crappies are opportunistic feeders, just like anything else. If something comes close to them and it's moving slow, they'll eat it and I want it to stop and sit in front of the crappie, so I'll use a light bite bobber. This is a three quarter inch bobber with a little clear leader. So I'm using three pound test, just a little swivel, uh, and then so your bobber's got a place to stop and rest, and a little slip sinker above it. You can use a bullet sinker or like a little barrel sinker here. And so I'm pitching, but you want that jig to stop for a second and twitch it and then move it. So that's a great search tool. It's hurry up and stop. Let the crappie come in and look at it. Crappies are, uh, are, are fish to absolutely love warm water. So in the spring, you wanna look for warm water. The warmest water on the lake you're at, you're gonna find crappies. And the mud draws the energy from the sun early, so the fish are gonna stack up there. So lakes that have shallows, with muddy bottom areas are going to hold crappies. And a lot of lakes, that could be the north end, but some lakes, it might be the south end. It depends on what the lake has for characteristics, mud, weeds, and all that stuff. But generally, hit the lake, find the warm uh, creeks, river mouths, harbors, uh, or any weed growth is really fantastic for crappies because they like weeds because they're constantly being hunted by predators. Like, so they're gonna be tucked away. And so get out there and try some of these techniques, get some bobbers. It brings out the kid in me when I see that go down. But remember key temperatures. When water temperatures are in the 40s to low 50s, crappies are gonna be a little bit farther away from shore. And as they warm up to 55 and up, the fish are gonna be really active in those warm, shallow areas. And then as it gets closer to low 60s, they're getting ready to spawn. So I hope this helps you out. Good luck fishing on the water. Well, I think one thing we can all agree on, bro knows panfish for sure. Well, thank you for joining us this week. On next week's show, we're gonna be switching gears to walleye. We're gonna be talking about some early season, springtime walleye strategies. And we wanna remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you're leaving any body of water, remember, clean, drain, and dry. And be sure to check us out online at anglingbuzz.com and also across our social medias at Angling Buzz on Instagram and Facebook as well. We have a lot more information. We go in depth on a lot of these subjects and share even more Angling Buzz Bite reports. Well, thank you for joining us this week and we'll see you at the next episode.